All right, so if you don't know, my name is Nick. This channel is called Swiftful Thinking, and in this series, we are learning all things SwiftUI. This is the SwiftUI bootcamp that you've been looking for. So if you're just joining us, definitely hit the subscribe button, take a look at this playlist. I really think it will help you out if you're trying to learn SwiftUI. Uh, so for those of you who are up to this point in the course, this is an exciting video because so far, we've only used very basic data types. We have used strings, we've used Booleans, we've used integers, but we have never made a custom data type. So when you're building your app, there are gonna be a ton of situations when you really need to use custom data types rather than just the basic. Because although you can include like a person's name as a string, chances are that user in your app is gonna have more information than just their name. They're gonna have their bio, their username, maybe whether or not they are premium. There's other information that you're gonna to wanna to include in that person's data point. And so to do that in Swift, we can build custom data types. And these are usually referred to as models. So in this video, we're gonna get used to how we can create these custom data types, and then also how we can implement them and use them efficiently in our views. What's up everyone, I'm back in Xcode. This is gonna be a very fun video. So let's get started by right clicking the navigator, creating a new file. Uh, you could probably guess already that it's going to be a Swift UI view. And we're going to call this one Model Bootcamp. And we're calling it Model Bootcamp because in MVVM architecture, which you're going to start hearing a lot, and we're going to get into in a couple videos. Um, but when we get into it, the custom data types are usually just called models. So we're going to call this Model Bootcamp. Let's click Create. Once you're inside, click resume on the canvas to make sure you're all connected and let's get coding. We're gonna start this off by setting up our screen. Let's add a navigation view. Open the brackets. Inside the navigation view, let's add a list and open the brackets again. And inside that list, we wanna loop on some data. So let's start by making a data array at the top here. We're gonna do at state var. Uh, users of type and it's going to be an array of string we're going to set this equal to a bunch of usernames so for right now I'm going to call this uh, Nick let's do Emily let's do Samantha let's do Chris so we have four names in our users array here and we're going to loop over them so let's just do four each open the parentheses and uh, we're going to use the third completion here with the ID. So click enter on that for each, obviously, users. The ID, we're going to use backslash dot self, which is basically just creating an ID for each user. Uh, and then in the content, we'll hit enter, get rid of this, and we're just going to call this name because we're looping on each user's name here, which is what these are. And let's start by just adding a text with the name. Let's click resume on the canvas to make sure that this is working. Underneath the list, let's add a navigation title and we will call this users. Let's add .list style just to get a little practice with this. And in here, I'm gonna start typing list style and there's a bunch of options. I'm going to use the inset group list style just cause I think it will look kinda cool for this video. And so, very simple right now, we have Nick, Emily, Samantha, Chris on our screen, and we can customize what we want in this view. We've done this in previous videos, but let's put this text here into an H stack. So I'm gonna hold the command button, click on embed in H stack. And on the left of the text, so before the text, I'm gonna add a circle, and we're gonna give it a frame with a width of 35, a height of 35, and delete the alignment. And let's add some spacing to that H stack. So I'm gonna hold the command button, click on the H stack, click on show Swift UI inspector. And for the spacing, let's give it maybe uh, 15. And lastly, underneath the H stack, let's add some padding. And with the edges, let's make it dot vertical and 10 should be fine. Just to make it a little bigger. Now the circle is representing a user profile image. We're not gonna actually deal with images and downloading images right now, uh, but I just wanna have a list here of a bunch of users. 
Now this is great and this is what we've all learned so far in this course, but in reality, when you have a list of users in your app, each of these users are gonna have more information than just their name. So for example, this user Nick has, yes, their name is Nick, but they probably also have other information such as a user ID, they probably have a user name, they might have a user bio, and when we have just an array of strings, we can't incorporate all that extra information into this. We just have exactly what it is, just a string. And what we're gonna do is create a custom data type or a custom model to basically include all of this user's information into one data point. So it's actually easier than it sounds. Outside of this struct up here, I'm gonna create another struct and we're gonna call this one user model. I'm gonna open the brackets and in this user model, I'm just gonna create a couple variables. So just like we make variables in here, I'm gonna put them up here. Now, when we're in a view, we can use these at state variables, and this is great for when variables are changing. But in my user struct, I don't want these variables to change. So I'm just gonna use let. So now let's start going through all of the data points that this user has. So right now, this word Nick is probably their display name, and it's not their username. So let's just do let display name, and that will be of type string. They also might have a separate username. So let's do let username of type string. And we can use other types in here as well. So for example, this person might have maybe 100 followers. And we can include in our user model how many followers they have. So let's say let follower count and this will be of type int and for integer. So now we have our user model, which has three different variable uh, data points. So in this user's array, instead of creating an array of strings, let's create an array of a user model. So I'll type in user model here. Of course, we need to delete what we have here because these are not user models. So I'm gonna comment this out just so we have it. And this needs to be an array of user model now. So let's start typing user model and we have a completion here. And then I'll open the parentheses and you'll see every time we create a user model, it is now asking us for a display name, a username and their follower count. So when you downloaded this from the database, when you downloaded this user's information, you would fetch all of this information. For right now, obviously we don't have any of that. So we're just gonna add some fake information in here. So for the display name, let's do Nick. For the username, let's do nick123 uh, and then follower count let's do maybe a hundred let's add a comma after that and add another user model to our array this time let's add maybe emily her username will be it's emily uh, maybe 1995 and follower count will be 55 let's add another one user model Display name, let's do Samantha. Her username will be uh, maybe Ninja, something random. And then follower count, let's do uh, 350, doesn't really matter here. And lastly, user model, display name, let's do Chris. Let's make his username being uh, Chris H2009. And follower count will be 88. Again, it doesn't really matter what you're putting in here. Uh, but now in our for each loop, we are looping on users still, but now users is an array of user model. So we're getting an error message here and it's that the for each requires that user model conforms to hashable. And all that basically means is that when we had an array of strings, Xcode knows exactly how to make that hashable, how to make that uh, basically searchable in a very efficient way. And that's why we could use this backslash dot self. And there are ways to easily make this user model hashable. But what's better than using this for each loop is we can actually use for each, open the parentheses and use this first completion here. And this first completion doesn't have that ID section that this current one does. So let's use this first one. And now it's just asking us for data. So we'll use users again. And then for content, we'll hit enter. And 
this time and we're looping on each user so let's just change this to user we're going to cut this h stack here paste it into this new for each loop and now we have another problem but it's easier to fix and i'll explain why because in this for each loop we didn't have ids for each of these users so we try to use this hashable completion here where we are creating basically a fake ID for each of these users. When we use this new completion here without this ID, it's expecting that each user already has an ID. So let's delete this for each down here. And in this loop now we're getting a error message that for each requires each user model conform to identifiable. And let's just conform to identifiable really quickly. So our struct is a user model and let's make it conform by using a colon and type in identifiable. And to conform to identifiable, all we need to do is add an ID to each of our users. So let's say let ID and we could make this a string. And just like when we have our user models here and they ask for a display name, then it's now going to ask us for a string. So you can see here, I have the error message and I can fix it and I can add an ID here. And this is great when we're downloading our user models from a database because in our database, they probably already have an ID. But I'm gonna press undo here and we don't have actual IDs for these users and we don't really care what the IDs are right now. So I can actually just set this ID uh, up here. So I'm just gonna set it equal to UUID open and close parentheses, this creates a new automatic ID. And then we want it to be a string. So let's just call dot string and UUID dot UUID string. And this just creates a random user ID string every time we create a user model. So all of these user models now have a custom random ID in them and our error goes away for conforming to identifiable. Now our last final error is that it cannot find name and scope and that's because we changed this loop to loop on each user. So here we can type in a user, press the period and how cool is this? We can now access all of the data points underneath this user. So if I quickly did ID and I click resume on the canvas, where these names are, you're gonna now see that UUID that was custom made by Xcode. So this is not very relevant what these IDs are, but I just wanna show you that when we added this UUID, it's creating these custom IDs for us and they're all unique, they're all different. Of course, we don't wanna display that on our app, so let's change this to user.displayName. And we can make our screen look a little better. Let's embed the text by pressing the command button, holding, clicking on text, embed in a V stack, and underneath this text, let's add another text, with user.username. The username usually has an at sign in front of it, so I'm going to cut this, create a string, put the at sign in, then I'm going to forward slash open and close parentheses and paste back in our user.username. Let's format this for dot foreground color, let's do gray. Let's make it a dot font of uh, caption. And for the display name, let's do dot font, maybe headline. And let's add some alignment to this V stack. So I'm gonna hold the command button and click on V stack. Click on show Swift UI inspector. And then we have the alignment here. I'm gonna put the left for leading. And this is looking better already. On the right side of each of these rows, let's add the number of followers they have. So let's add after this V stack, let's add a spacer to push everything out outward. On the right of that spacer, let's add a V stack. Open the parentheses and let's add a text, make a string. And again, we're gonna do forward slash open and close parentheses. And this will be user dot follower count. We can see it come up here. Let's make this dot font dot headline Underneath the follower count, let's add another text and let's just have this as followers. Again, foreground color will make dot gray and cap font will do dot caption. 
this looks good and let's wrap this up uh, with maybe a check whether or not these users are verified so in our user model we don't have a verified data point but we can add that really easily let's just do let is verified of type bool so when we create a user model where you're gonna say they are verified or they are not verified let's let this compile build we're gonna get our errors here so let's click fix on these errors and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here uh, I'm gonna click fix on all four of these and let's just do maybe true false uh, false true doesn't really matter and if they're verified, I just want to show a little verified indicator. So let's put that maybe to the left of the follower count. So after the spacer, before the vstack for the follower count, let's just add a uh, image. Let's do system name. And then we can use a system name icon. And I'm going to use a system icon named checkmark.seal.fill. Let's click resume to see it okay let's make it blue like it's verified on Instagram so we'll do that foreground color dot blue and now we only want this verified to show if they are verified so we have already learned conditional statements and let's just add one here so here we'll say if user dot is verified and I don't know why my completion is not working we'll open the brackets and if only if they're verified will we add this image. So I'll cut this, put it into this closure. And now we have our final product. So let's check this out. We have our area where the downloaded picture would be of that user. We have their display name, their username. We have whether or not they're verified. And we have the number of followers. So this is a very real world example of why it is so powerful to create custom data types in your apps. Pretty much anytime you have users, you have posts, you have any type of data, you need a custom data point. And you can make these data types conform to identifiable so that they can be used in loops. And that's so easy by just adding identifiable and giving it an ID, which we created an auto ID by using UUID. So that's it for this video. And we're gonna start using this more and more in all the videos to come just because uh, it's, it's very practical and very realistic that if you're gonna build an app, you're gonna need a custom data point, custom model like this user model. So hope you guys understood this, hope this wasn't too confusing, and uh, hope you enjoyed it. As always, I'm Nick, this is Swiftful Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.